Let's solve leak code 121, best time to buy and sell a stock. Now in this video, we're going to show the intuitive approach, which will have a higher time complexity than needed. And then we're going to apply the sliding window technique, which we discussed in the previous video. And we're gonna see how that simplifies things. We're given an array prices where prices I is the price of a given stock on the ith day. You want to maximize your profit by choosing a single day to buy one stock and choosing a different day in the future to sell that stock. Return the maximum profit you can achieve from this transaction. If you cannot achieve any profit, just return zero. So you're given an array of numbers and we can see that seven is the greatest number and then one is the smallest number. And then we want to buy low and sell high. So we wouldn't want to buy when it's seven because that's the highest possible price. We want to buy when it's at one, which is the lowest price. And then we want to sell at the best time possible after that. So if we buy at one, and then we sell at six, we see that six minus one gives us a profit of five. So that will be the result. And then there's this note that buying on day two and selling on day one is not allowed because you can't buy here and then sell here, for example, because you know that doesn't, that's not how it works. So, Let's go ahead and see the intuitive approach here. So basically what I want to detect or what I want to keep track of is I want to keep track of the max profit and we will set this to zero and we can go ahead and we can turn the max profit because the question said if we can't find one, we can just return zero. So then what we want to do is we just want to iterate through each of the prices. So we start at the beginning of the array. And while i is less than the length of the array, we simply increment the value. So that's just a standard for loop. And then we want to keep track of the buy price. So for this iteration, we want to say, well, we know the buy price is just going to correspond to the price of the index that we're looping through and or prices. Then we want to essentially have another for loop here. And this next for loop, we're going to reiterate over things. But this time we can say we want j to equal i plus 1 because j or the next iteration has to be after i and we do that while j is less than the price's length and then we go ahead and increment that but you can see here we've got this o of n squared thing going on here so basically in the next iteration we can determine the sell price so the sell price or the potential sell price is simply the element here referring to the prices array and then we can work out our profit or our potential profit by taking the sell price and subtracting the buy price and then we can just have this if condition here so if the calculated profit for this particular iteration is less than, or is greater than the max profit, then what we can do is we can set the max profit equal to the profit. And if we take a look at this here, this is O of one, because we're assigning the values max profit, buy price, and then we're reassigning the values sell price and profits. So that O of 4 would simplify to O of 1. So I can run this. 
and that is accepted but it's really quite slow because we've got this of n squared so i'm going to redo this and i'm going to aim for a better time complexity and a better space well at least a better time complexity so let's just rewrite this so we need to apply the sliding window technique. So if you haven't seen my previous video on the sliding window technique, make sure you watch that. Now, when I explained that, I explained it in the context of a subarray. So what we're doing is we're taking, rather than doing a nested for loop to determine the sum of a subarray, we had this sliding window technique, which essentially said that, well, we know the result of the sum or the average based on the previous iteration. Let's take that and then just simply subtract off the index that's no longer in the sliding window after we've slided the window over one and then add on the new element that now is in the kth position plus the index that you're on. So we saw that. But the sliding window technique doesn't isn't limited to, um, you know, just subarrays of length greater than one. We can also consider the case where we need to track numbers for the previous iterations. So rather than looping through things twice, if we can just track some bit of information, that's essentially a variation of the sliding window technique. So I might actually just undo that because I want to grab onto this for loop and get rid of this one though. So essentially we still want to keep track of the max profit, but the way we can use the sliding window technique in this case is by tracking the min price, which is initially going to be the first price because if we keep track of the minimum price, um, it helps us to calculate our maximum profit simply by incrementing the for loop and determining the price and comparing it to that rather than looping through the array for a second time in a nested fashion. So what we can say here is we can say, well, basically if the price that we're on is less than the minimum price, then we can say, well, we know our new minimum price because that's just going to be equal to the price that we're on. And then using that value, we can calculate our profit and note that we're iterating um, into the future where the first element is the previous day and the uh, next are uh, the days after that. So since we have that time element there, we're not losing any information. So we can just say, well, the profit is simply going to be the price that you're on minus the min price. So if the profit is greater than the max profit, then we just simply set the max profit equal to the profit. So here we've simplified things and the time complexity, since we've just got this for loop is gonna be O of N. And then once again, our space complexity is just going to be O of one. So let's just go ahead and submit that. And we can see that it beats 75%, so that's pretty good.